Hello and welcome to A-Level Physics at Davenant Foundation School. My name is Miss Casey and I'm Head of Physics and I'm very pleased that you've opted to study this amazing subject at A-Level. It will build upon your GCSE knowledge so that you can study the physical world from the atom to the universe and discover the laws that make the universe work. At Davenant we study the OCR specification A. During the next two years, I will teach you alongside my colleagues, Mr. Cottrell and Miss Parker. So where will this qualification lead? Alongside A-level maths, you would be able to study and train for many careers, which may also include becoming a research scientist. It may lead you to study astrophysics or space science. We highly recommend A-level maths, as this is a quantitative subject which relies upon you being competent mathematically, with some level 3 maths that is also taught in the mechanics section of the Maths A-Level. You may be dedicated and thrive in an academic post. Here you can see that physics research goes from the largest telescopes to the largest machines at CERN to investigate the smallest particles of matter. Each year Quite a large majority of students will go to on to study engineering at university after studying A-level physics and maths. This could be mechanical or automotive engineering. Some will specialise in aeronautical engineering and some students have combined this successfully with their RAF cadet background. One of our previous students has just qualified as an aerospace systems engineer. We have students this year applying for architecture and architectural engineering. This will draw upon their knowledge and understanding of forces and materials. One student who's just finished her first year at Nottingham described how her project team had to design a house choose materials for the correct behavioural properties and design the plumbing and the electrics also. Quite a few students after studying A-level physics and then going on to do say a physics degree will be headhunted by the financial world for jobs that will require you to use the skills that you'd have gained during these courses. These are your quantitative skills and that attention to detail of reading information properly and making sure you've not missed any little, inf little bits of information that may help you solve a problem. You may decide to go on and study medical physics. Another ex-student has just graduated from Imperial College after studying for a Master's in Physics and is heading to Berlin after the summer to do a postdoctoral research post in medical physics, medical imaging techniques. So our A-level course is split into six teaching modules. Module 1 is the development of your practical skills. Module 2 is the foundations of physics. Foundation of physics includes um, work such as vectors and scalars and work on the SI units and these concepts permeate the rest of the A-level. We then study module 3 and 4 and we normally teach modules 1 to 4 in year 12. These form the basis of our Year 13 work. We normally start Module 5 before the summer of Year 12, and Module 5 consists 
of thermal physics, circular, simple harmonic motion, gravitational physics and astrophysics. We then finish with module 6 which is called particles and medical physics. This includes work on capacitors, electric field, electromagnetism, nuclear physics and finally medical physics. You can see the exam structure on the right hand side. All the exams are at the end. I will talk a little bit more about the practical endorsement afterwards. So what do we expect of you? First of all, we really hope that you want to study this course and that you have enjoyed physics at GCSE and you are intrigued to where it will lead. We expect you to work hard. We do, as I sort of say again, expect you to do A-level maths as 40% of the A-level physics papers will be at A-level maths standard. So what do we expect of you in class? We expect you to participate and ask questions. We expect you to persevere, not give up, and try and work out where you're going wrong and what you must do to correct your work. We expect a minimum of 90% attendance. For you to arrive on time to all lessons, complete all your classwork and all your homework. We expect you to study independently. Not just what we're teaching you, but also beyond the course, in preparation for your future. You may decide to go into university, or you might decide to do an apprenticeship. We expect you to bring your physics workbook with you. Each module of the course, for example module 3, is divided into sub-modules. So for example, module 3.1, which is called Forces and Motion, has, um, we have made for that module a booklet. And in the booklet you will have a copy of all the PowerPoints, all the worksheets, all the revision resources and past questions. So that has to come with you for every lesson. And then when we finish that module, that booklet is kept at home and you get your next booklet. We do expect you to get the physics textbook, which we issue from school. We don't expect you to bring them to every lesson, but I do expect you to have your booklet in a folder with you. You would have given in, hopefully by the end of the first week of term, a deposit for your textbook, and that's normally done through parent pay. So, during the two years, you will be taught a number of practical skills. And the skills are examined in Module 1 for AS and A2. So, the skills that could be examined in a written exam would be, for example, drawing graphs and analysing data. For the practical skills, you will have to keep a record that you have completed 12 practicals and written these up and then OCR will come in and spot check that we are carrying out this procedure properly and they can endorse it. So at the end of the course you will have an A-level grade in physics plus you will get a pass or fail which will tell universities or your employers whether you passed your practical endorsement. Generally all universities will expect a pass So, over the summer, I'd like you to choose a book to read, one or two, and you're going to then carry out a book review of that book. So, I'd highly recommend, for example, the Bill Bryson book, A Short History of Nearly Everything, especially if you're studying other sciences alongside physics. I'm just going to switch to the next slide. You may choose to read a book which isn't on the PowerPoint, and you can, as long as it is relevant to the A-level course. So this gives you a taster of what books would be suitable. Choose the area of interest that you think you will like. So it might be quantum physics, it could be astrophysics, it could be particle physics. So what to do over the summer? Read at least one book from the reading list. 
you will be writing a review of that book. You're going to complete the essay, which is on SI units. This is describing the summer task. You have to make yourself an account on the Isaac Physics website and join the class with the code written in the summer task. You then will complete the exercises which have been assigned to the class. Then when you return, there will be a baseline test to see where you are starting from. We will expect you to have a very good knowledge of the areas that are covered by the Isaac Physics topics. So, thank you for listening. I hope you have a lovely summer and I'm looking forward to seeing you in September to start your A-level courses.